comprised of eight separate pulse arms with a series of global controls. OctoPulse is a semi-generative pulse generator for dynamic, expansive, polymetric rhythms, melodies, and harmonies for use with Ableton Live, Max for Live. To install OctoPulse, double-click the downloaded zip folder. From there, you can take the MFA OctoPulse folder included within and drag it to your user library, presets, MIDI effects, max MIDI effect folder. With OctoPulse installed, I can locate the max device in the max MIDI effect subfolder. I will drag it to a MIDI track with wavetable already instantiated. OctoPulse is a MIDI effect and therefore must be placed prior to instruments. It produces MIDI information, which instruments will translate into sound. It can also process transposition information as well, as you'll soon see. Now, because I have not altered the key or scale of the Global Hub instance in this project, the OctoPulse arrived and displays a chromatic scale, but I will change the scale here in Global Hub, which is not necessary if you do not have one instantiated but I will set it to a C minor scale for now. And as I press play on the global transport, the default pattern of Octopulse's eight global pulses will commence. It's a little fast, so I think I will drop the BPM down. Here we have a variety of global pulse settings, randomization settings, eight pulses in the center, and output settings on the right. Let's begin by looking at one single pulse. Pulses can be deactivated by clicking their number. This is reflected in the grayed out nature of the rest of the pulse parameters. As I focus on pulse one, you'll see that I can reduce the chance it will play. I can change the pitch at which it will play, conforming of course to the Aeolian minor scale imposed by the instance of Global Hub. I'll double click to reset it to the default C3. Each pulse has its own default MIDI note value. If there are two or more pulses activated, I can solo one of them. But when I leave solo mode, the rest of the pulses will be activated. So now I will mute them all. Crucially, we have the base rate and the multiplier. I'll leave the base rate for this step on 16th notes. Right now, we're hearing it every third 16th note. If I reduce the multiplier to a value of one, we will hear it every 16th note. If I expand it to say four, we will hear it every quarter note or four 16th notes. I can change the base rate by clicking this menu. This gives me a different base impulse value. So now I can set it to eighth notes and it will play now every third eighth note. By default, the length of each pulse will be the same as the bass rate, but I can multiply the length here, making notes longer or shorter. You might have to reduce the release settings in your instrument to really hear the change in length multiplication. I'll set this back to 16th notes. And now we're hearing it again, every third 16th note at C3, playing 100% of the time. I can also change the bass octave here. And I can induce octave randomization on a per pulse trigger basis here.
So now the pulses will be transposed within these minimum and maximum ranges. So I can skew the octave range down to lower octaves or up to higher octaves by adjusting these. Sometimes just a little bit of octave randomization is all that's needed to introduce some variation to a pulse. Finally, we have the bass velocity which tends to govern volume, but may be programmed to control other parameters depending on the instrument you're triggering. We can also add some velocity randomization within the minimum and maximum ranges, which we can constrain here. These are the pulse settings. Now that I've shown you the pulse settings, I'll quickly reactivate all the pulses by tapping in and out of solo mode. So now we can hear these polymetric patterns cycling through, all with a bass rate of 16th notes. Those octaves are going too high, so I will reduce that a bit. So now, for example, I'll solo each step and turn and quickly explain. Here's our D-sharp 3, playing every 5 16th notes. Here's a G3, playing every 7 16th notes. An F3, playing every 9 16th notes. And this is simply the default pattern. You should check out the presets that come with Octopulse to see what else is capable of. On the far left, we have a number of global controls. First of all, we have the playback type. In free mode, Octopulse will play so long as Live's global transport is running. In gate mode, it will only play when receiving note on messages. However, it does not re-trigger when doing so. As long as Octopulse is in receive mode, it will also transpose by receiving the MIDI note in pitch, of course, while staying within the selected key and scale. So that's me playing some different notes. Side mode is the opposite of gate mode. It will only play between note off messages. So right now, because there are no notes, it's playing. If I trigger a note, it effectively mutes the octopulse. Using gate and side modes on different channels with different MIDI routings allows you to create complicated interactive conversations between different musical elements with all of our manifest audio note producing Max for Live MIDI effects. Finally, we have an arpeggiator mode. Like free mode, so long as receive is enabled, it will transpose whenever I play a different MIDI note. With the key difference being that all the cycles reset when I trigger the new note. I'll set it back to free mode for the rest of this tutorial. But while we're discussing reset, that's a perfect way to explain this slider. At the default of zero, the cycles will never reset. However, if I increase it to say a value of one, then all the cycles will reset every one bar, effectively creating a one bar pattern. This makes Octopulse highly flexible for generating musically intelligible patterns as well as the sort of endlessly sprawling patterns that it already offers. A two bar interval. is somewhat longer. Now here we have our global play chance. And this is where the sort of central control of all arms, all pulse arms of our octopulse come into play. These percentage sliders, it should be noted, will override individual pulse parameters. So 
be advised you may need to reset some of them if you had them configured in a particular way after adjusting these percentages. So to make the entire pattern more minimal, I can reduce the chance of play for all steps simultaneously. I can also adjust the velocity percentage here, the base velocity value here, which can be used quite expressively to intensify or mellow out the volume and other program parameters of all pulses simultaneously. We can also adjust the global minimum and maximum velocity randomization ranges for all pulses simultaneously. The slider here has a lighter gray color corresponding to the lighter gray of the octave settings. Here we can globally induce octave randomization for all pulses. Below, we find the global pulse duration multiplier. So now they're all quite clipped and slow, or I can elongate all of them. Finally, below this slider, we have a global hold percentage. So this is the chance that notes will be held, which is particularly useful in mono sounds to induce gliding, which you'll hear with the octaves. If I go to wavetable and switch it from poly to mono mode with a bit of glide time, now we can hear the glide being enforced by those holds 64% of the time. That's 100% hold, so all notes are fully sustained. So you can create some very expressive patterns this way. It's worth noting that if I switch wavetable back to poly mode, we can also select from three different poly modes from Octopulse output. Mono 1 prioritizes the last played note, Mono 2 the lowest, and Mono 3 the highest. So if you only want one note to play at a time, you might select one of these mono modes. However, if you wish to play chords or layer percussive elements, poly mode is probably the one for you. However, in poly mode, your instrument must also be set to polyphonic playback to play those chords or notes that are occurring simultaneously. I'll toggle this instance of wavetable back to mono for now. In addition to the global probability, which I'll set back to 100 for this example, we have a global multiplier. This won't change anything visibly, but by default, this multiplier value of one means that all the pulses will play one times their current pulse multiplier. One times three is three, one times five is five, one times seven is seven, and so on. If I set it to two, it doubles the space between all of the pulse multipliers. So now, pulse one will play every six sixteenth notes, pulse two will play every 10, pulse three every 14, pulse four every 18, etc. So this allows me to instantly control the value of all pulse rate multipliers simultaneously. And I can really space them out at higher values. You won't hear many of the steps for quite a while. Finally, we have a global offset stagger. This is useful when working with quarter note or eighth note patterns, but really any pattern at all. This allows you to offset the start point of the entire pulse pattern for all pulses simultaneously by a metrical value here, which we won't really hear without a metronome. I'll enable the metronome to hear it briefly. 
So if I offset this by one eighth note, the feel is completely different. And we have a multiplier for the offset as well. So I could offset it by three eighth notes instead, for example. But for now, I'll set it to none. Now, here we have our randomization settings. We can randomize the note values for all pulses simultaneously within this range by this degree by clicking its dice button. So now I have a new note pattern within the global key and scale, of course. If I want to revert to the default settings, I can simply click the revert button. But I think I will randomize once again. Now I can also randomize the rates by this percentage. In default global mode, it changes the rate for each pulse arm at the same time. So it randomized all of them to 64th notes with, of course, their individual multipliers. I can also use this to simply globally set all pulse bass rates to a musical interval. If I switch from G or global to I or individual pulse randomization mode and click randomize again, each step will have its own pulse rate randomized. So now we have 16th note triplet times three on pulse one, 32nd note times five on step two, and etc. So there's no right or wrong, it's just a matter of knowing which one you want to use in a given scenario. I'll switch back to global mode and set them back to 16th notes for now. Finally, we have the global multipliers and we can randomize the rate multiplication of all pulses again according to this probability or chance of randomization degree of randomization within these constrained ranges so i'll set this to between three and nine for example and hit the randomization button now i can randomize all of these together at the same time with the global dice, instantly generating a new pulse pattern. That might be too extreme, and for example, it set them all to quarter note dotted, which is gonna be a very slow pattern. So to avoid the rates being randomized as well, I can lock them. A locked randomization parameter will ignore the global randomization. So now I can set the rates back to my 16th note setting and as an alternative to the lock I suppose I could also set the probability amount to zero but I'll click randomize again and you'll see that while the notes and multipliers change the rates remain the same finally we have a global reversion back to the default pulse states here these two on off toggles allow you to Instantly unmute all muted steps, and then it becomes an on-off toggle for all steps. So it's either on-off, but if some steps are already on, but not all, it turns all the currently muted steps on before becoming an on-off toggle. The inversion toggle, on the other hand, activates deactivated pulses while deactivating the currently active ones. So you can quickly create two different versions of pulse patterns together all at once. Okay, so finally, if I want Octopulse to not receive incoming transposition, I can disable receive mode. Now it will only transpose internally in other words, according to this slider here. With this slider, we are adding and subtracting so it works together with incoming MIDI transposition in receive mode.
everything is transposed back to normal. Of course, we can select any one of, I believe, 67 different scales here in any key, along with the poly and mono modes. If you wish Octopulse to remain pinned to local pitch and scale and key settings and ignore global hub, click this toggle here to pin those settings locally. This can be useful in many situations, for example, with percussion. I have a Bossa Nova percussion kit. In this case, I'll drag another instance of Octopulse prior to it. It's already triggering many steps, but I can see that they're too high, so I'll have to transpose them down. Also, because drums tend to be programmed chromatically, I will set it to a chromatic scale. Instead of the Aeolian, it automatically adopted from the global hub and, of course, pin it locally. Having done so, I can move this down two octaves at a time by holding shift arrow. So now I think what I want to do is I'm going to move the negative to zero. So zero to 12, it will only randomize notes within that one octave. And I will also uh, randomize the multipliers. Let's say 1 to 11. No, 13. Let's try that. Leaving them at 16th notes. I think a bit of velocity randomization would also help. Getting pretty funky. And I think I'll reduce the play chance a little bit, so that will also just kind of introduce a little bit of dynamism to the pattern. Because not every single note is going to play every single time. I'll also set it to reset every four bars. Of course, I can induce global multiplication to slow the pattern down, as it were, or expand the rate of all of them together. This can be useful for dynamic changes. I can also slowly build a rhythm up, one pulse at a time. It goes without saying that once I've randomized into a pattern, I might wish to go and adjust certain step settings a little bit more manually. Now I can re-enable pulses one at a time, and of course, all at once here. Now to capture results, I can insert an audio track and configure it to receive from the kit or the wavetable. In this case, I'll set it to receive from this drum kit, arm it to record, and begin capturing as I perform with the octopole settings. Once I've got enough recorded, I can simply hit the track stop button and begin editing the audio as needed. However, to retain more flexibility, I might wish instead to record to a MIDI track. In that case, I will insert a MIDI track, and this time I will record it from the wavetable. So I'll select it to receive MIDI in from that wavetable, once again arm it to record, and begin playing. Now, I'm going to command click so that wavetable can still receive MIDI input, allowing me to performatively transpose the pattern. I 
I can of course also change other parameters here. Once I'm satisfied, I can simply press play on the MIDI clip and then either bring the clip back to the track that I originally used and disable Octopulse. And play the notes that I captured editing as needed throughout. Or I could leave it on the track where it was recorded and simply express it through a new instrument by dropping a new instrument onto that track. So this has been a brief look at some of the many features Octopulse can offer for both melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic content to give you all kinds of control to create new rhythmic polymetric patterns it would be very difficult to control any other way. So that's a quick look at the many capabilities of Octopulse for generating and controlling unique, rhythmic, polymetric, melodic, and harmonic patterns.